I think if you're looking to buy a Tesla, it's very quickly quite obvious that there really is no competition. I know it kind of looks like there is, and a lot of all the EV proponents will, will say, oh, there's so much choice you can choose from all the different cars, and everyone's got an EV now that's really good. I don't buy that, really. I think the only one worth buying is the Tesla, in particular the Model Y, but obviously if the Model 3 kind of meets your needs a bit better, you can save a bit of money there. But there's one feature that the Model Y has that the Model 3 doesn't. I think that's super important, and we'll get to that in this video as well. So make sure you watch to the end. So the first one is the Frank. Now this is interesting because when we were kind of being first told about the idea of EVs, we were kind of assured that one of the benefits of an EV in general is that they'd have this massive storage space where the engine should be. And Tesla delivered on that. All their cars have got really good Franks. But what's happened is, as we've seen the other car makers coming out with their own EVs, they're not bothering putting frunks in. And the Mercedes EQB is a good example of this. If you lift up the bonnet in that and you see there's just a, a, a huge sprawling mess of, of a, a not very well engineered components just chucked in there. Now, actually, I sound a bit cynical about that approach, but I think what Mercedes have done is quite clever. They have created a range of EVs based on existing cars and they haven't obviously spent very much time engineering those components to be sort of small and to allow for the frunk. But it has meant that they've managed to bring some EVs to market that are generally okay, but they're just not in the same league as the Tesla that's actually had this thoughtful engineering process involved to minimize the space needed by all the components in the car there. So it's a nice reminder of the quality of the engineering involved in the Tesla, but the end result is that you get this fantastically useful feature of having a good storage space in the front of the car. Next up, we're going to look at range. And again, I think this is one of these things that is kind of downplayed. The importance of range is kind of downplayed. You know, a lot of people say it doesn't matter about the range. You know, you just charge up overnight. But actually, I have had quite a few situations where I've maxed out the range using my overnight charging kind of schedule. And I've needed superchargers a couple of times. So the idea of a car with less range without the supercharger network to, to back it up there as well, it's just a horrendous concept. I think a lot of people are really making a mistake there, buying an electric car from a brand that they like and, and thinking, oh, they'll live with a lower range. But the reality quickly sinks in when they realize the charging infrastructure is a bit of a joke. And in winter, especially, that range is much lower than what it sort of seems like it should be as well, which of course applies to the Tesla. But that's also, of course, why you need a car with lots of range in the first place. Now, this is another interesting one where I think we're kind of being missold this on the idea that all EVs handle really well. It just isn't the case. If you look at the Moose Test, which is something that has always fascinated me. Anytime I've bought a car, I've always looked at the Moose Test videos to see how they handle and see what kind of speed it can perform the Moose Test at. The so Moose Test is a simulated swerve and then back into the lane as I've designed to simulate swerving to avoid a moose. So the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y score is actually joint first place with the Ford Focus on this channel that does all these Moose Tests. And I think that's absolutely amazing. It shows just how far Tesla engineers have gone to create a car that can handle really well, even though it's actually a very heavy car. And we were always told that EVs will handle really well because the center of gravity is so low and all the rest of it. And that's actually nonsense. If you look at some of the EVs from the other car makers, their performance on the Moose Test is really bad, even by normal petrol car standards. So again, it's one of these things where we think, oh, all EVs have these benefits. It's not, it's actually only the Tesla that really delivers on that promise. Price is the next area that Tesla are now absolutely crushing it in terms of the competition since they recently re reduced the prices so significantly a couple of weeks back. So, if, you know, if you look at what you can get for the same money that you would put into a Tesla Model Y, especially if you're just looking at the standard range rear wheel drive version, I know the range is lower than that. And I said to always prioritize the range, but you might be absolutely confident that you don't need that range. In which case, you could look at that one and then compare it with the other lower range options on the market. And then you can look at all the other things in this video as to why the Model Y is still the better choice. But there's basically absolutely nothing that's compared comparable to the Tesla for that kind of price if we look at things like range and all these kinds of engineering feats that are involved in this car. Next up, we're looking at performance. Now, everybody knows Teslas are crazy fast. They built the whole brand on this idea that their cars are super fast. Now, I've always been interested in this idea of a kind of high performance family car. And I eventually actually gave up on the idea when I was with petrol cars because the maintenance involved with a high performance family petrol car that you're driving all your miles in, it just it ends up just getting really expensive. And of course, the petrol and all the rest of it. But Tesla have thrown that on its head. They've allowed us to make a sensible economic choice by getting an electric car, but given us insane performance at the same time. And interesting Interestingly, none of the other EV makers seem to be taking it as seriously as that. Again, looking at the Mercedes EQB, which I think is on paper kind of a good competitor to the Model Y, it is the same kind of price. It has the seven seat option, which we're still waiting for in the UK on the Model Y. But in principle, it's a family car. But of course, it falls way short on the range and, and lots of other areas as well. But if you look at reviews of people testing that car, they say the front wheels spin when you give it full power. 
that's just crazy. You almost never get wheel spin in the Tesla and it's got way more power. And then so many of the other competing EVs just don't really come close in terms of performance either. Now, the interesting thing about performance in an electric car, the more horsepower the motors have, the stronger the regenerability. And of course that helps with your range. You know, you get this incredible performance, but you know also that's giving you the efficiency and the range that you need in the electric car as well. So it's one of these things with the Tesla where you really get to have the cake and eat it. You get the performance, which is absolutely wonderful to drive. That ability to just quickly waft up from one speed limit to a bigger speed limit is, is amazing. It really is an enjoyable process. Interestingly, the performance on a Tesla is so accessible as well. You don't have to be a complete car nerd to just find this incredibly enjoyable to drive. Next up, we've got the landscape screen, which I always thought was just an amazing masterstroke from Tesla when they were trying to sell a car to people who were kind of nervous about the idea of having to spend time sitting at a charger. Of course, the solution to that is to make that time an enjoyable time and not wasted time. So if you have an entertainment system with a widescreen screen and you can watch videos on there or play games, then the time you spend charging is just more recreational time in a very comfortable environment. And that's brilliant. And yet we don't see it in all the other EVs. I think we're seeing it coming in in the Fisker, which has got a screen that swivels between portrait and landscape. I mean, I would, that sounds like a, a massive overkill. There's no reason to not have the, the screen in landscape the way I see it. It works perfectly well. A lot of people complain that their hand on the steering wheel is just in the way of the edge of the screen. For me, it's not a problem at all. I, I don't know if it's just the position of the seat or if there are some certain heights or, or configurations with the steering wheel and the seat position where it's a little bit more of a problem than otherwise. But generally, you can move your head while you're driving and you should move your head while you're driving to see past your A pillars. So I don't know why people are just rigidly sat there saying to themselves, I can't see the screen you can just look, you know, it's not a problem. The only thing you really need to look at the screen for while you're driving, of course, is the speed and the maps are way over on the left, which is fully visible anyway. So the idea that you can just park up and, and spend some time in the car, whether you're charging or not, just adds to the usefulness of the car. And the sound is amazing to back this sort of film watching experience in the car, but yet we're not seeing this from any other car makers. They're still pretending a car is just a tool for navigating around the place and you get out when you get there. The reality is a car can be so much more useful than that when you think of it as a comfortable place that you can spend time in, whether you're charging or whether you're just waiting for somebody. Next up, we've got autopilot. Now, I know this is one of these things, that, especially in the UK, it doesn't really materialize into anything that exciting. But the beta that we're seeing in America is, is absolutely mind blowing to see what they're achieving with this system and to think that all of these cars have got the capability to do this and will just be enabled by a software update is absolutely mind blowing. So again, it's maybe a little bit more of a, a kind of piece of evidence as to what you're actually buying here in terms of advanced engineering and what's going on behind the scenes for future software updates. But it's incredible incredible to see that and to think that the cars that we're buying now may well get this. I do think we're going to always struggle with legislation with this self-driving car idea. You know, are we always going to have to have somebody legally responsible for the car in the driver's seat? That means they can't be asleep and that they can't be drunk and all the rest of it. I think it would be incredible if we can actually get to the point where you don't have to be in the driver's seat. I can't wait to see if we can pull that off as a society, but I do think what Tesla are doing there is amazing. And there's just nobody else who's even coming close to this. Tesla are the only people that have got this data that they can put into the neural network to get their stuff to learn how to drive basically using vision. So next up, we're going to look at the reversing camera. And this is just such a sort of simple feature that you take for granted. And of course, most cars don't have cameras that look down the sides of the car. I know a lot of cars have got the 360 thing where it maps and merges it all together and you get a weird blurry, distorted top down. It's quite cool. It's kind of a head turning feature. But the reality is these side repeater cameras on the Tesla combined with the big, it's just incredibly clear reversing camera that's massive on the screen here just makes parking this car so easy. I would take this over a 360 distorted blurry thing any day of the week it's an absolutely fantastic feature and interesting because it's there as a result of the full self-driving stuff those cameras are obviously used by the system for looking at cars so it's one of those things where you're just getting a lovely user feature as a result of all the engineering gone into this for something else lastly let's look at this absolutely killer feature that only Teslas seem to have at this price point I think maybe there are some ultra luxury EVs that have this the Model 3 unfortunately doesn't even have this either so this is really just a Model Y killer feature it's one of the reasons I switched from the Model 3 to the Model Y as well and that is the HEPA filter so this is this insanely massive filter that purifies all of the air coming into the cabin. Now there's way more to this than meets the eye. In an EV, you don't have that waste heat that an internal combustion engine has. So in the winter, if you want to block the fumes from the outside by putting the recycler mode on and then still have your cabin air warmed up, 
you will steam up. The Model 3 we had used to steam up in this situation. So if you're following a diesel car and you want to block those fumes, you put the recycler on, you steam up in the winter because you can't have hot dehumidified air in an electric car in the same way you can in a petrol car. I'm not quite sure all the, the reasons why that's the case, but I think it comes down to the fact that you don't have waste heat in an EV. So in the Model Y, you don't even need to put the recycler on. That's the key. You're actually getting the kind of drier air from the outside coming in, so you don't steam up, but there are no fumes that come in with that air because of this HEPA filter. And only the Model Y seems to have it at this price point. Let me know if there are other cars that have HEPA filters that I haven't heard about. I think it's one of the most important things to look for when you're buying an EV. I would love for the Model Y to see some real competition from the other car makers. It just doesn't seem like they're anywhere near them yet. This channel is only going to be for Tesla content, so make sure you subscribe for that. I do have another broader channel that looks at other kinds of things as well. And I'll see you in this video next where I look at these amazing apps for, for your Apple Watch that let you control the Tesla using Bluetooth alone, so they don't even need to be on the internet to work. Incredible things, incredible technology, and I'll see you there.